today we will be discussing section 4.5 part 1 and we will be focusing on the basics of the graphs of sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and get started with y equals the sine of x. The first thing we're going to do is un use our unit circle to graph y equals the sine of x. Um, now remember that sine is going to be the y value and so looking at that circle we're going to be looking at the y value at different angles. So the first angle we're at is 0 and the sine of 0 meaning the y value at 0 is 0. If we go on to pi over 2 the sine of pi over 2 is 1 so we'll go up here to 1. The sine of pi so the y value at pi is back to 0. 3 pi over 2 is down to negative 1 and finally 2 pi is back at 0. Now we could continue after that and our graph would start to repeat. So that means it takes 2 pi for this graph before it starts repeating and that's going to be what we call the period. Now we have five main points here. These are going to be the five points we use when we're graphing sine. And you'll also notice that down the center there is a line of symmetry right here on that x-axis and that will become important to us later along with those five points we just graphed. Let's go ahead and talk about some of these properties, the first being the domain. Now the domain is the possible angles I can have, and really I can have any angle I want. We can keep going around and around the unit circle. So that means the domain in this case is negative infinity to infinity. As for the range, the low point on our graph is negative 1 and the high point is 1. So it's from negative 1 to 1, our range. And you can see we use brackets because we actually touch those points. As for the period, we've already learned that the period of sine is 2 pi, and as you can see on the graph, after 2 pi it'll repeat itself again. So that's why the period is 2 pi. The next thing I want to talk about is something called amplitude. Now what amplitude is, is it's half the distance from the lowest to the highest point. So it's going from, basically the idea is it's going from the center line either to the high point, or from the center line to the low point on the graph. You can see in either case the amplitude is going to be 1. Our y-intercept, we started at 0, 0, and you can see here that there are going to be lots of x-intercepts and they're going to keep repeating. So we've got 0, pi, 2 pi, the next one after that then would be 3 pi, and so on. So if you're trying to look for a pattern here, you'll notice that it's all the, um, basically just multiples of pi. And then if we want to discuss if this graph is either, even, odd, or neither, we know that the sine equation is odd, and so it's going to be an odd graph. Uh-oh, let's get our stuff back here. If we talk about what that means, though, in terms of this being an odd graph, is the fact that um, an odd graph, remember, from Chapter 1 is symmetric over the y-axis. Right now, if we kind of zoom out a little bit, we have this picture. It would continue going like this, this way. And you can see that if I flip this over the origin, that it has that symmetry over the origin. And so that's why this is an odd graph. And you can see just looking at that little bit, the odd part there. All right, let's go ahead and continue now. So we are going to go on to cosine. So just like we did with sine, we're going to start by graphing cosine. Once again, the x values are our angles off the unit circle, but this time we're looking at the x values as opposed to the y values. Um, and again, our high point on the graph here is going to be a positive 1, and the low point will be a negative 1. So let's go ahead and start graphing. And the cosine of 0, this time looking at the x values, is 1. So you'll notice right away there's a change between sine and cosine. At pi over 2, cosine is 0. At pi, cosine is negative 1. Again, we're looking at the x values on the unit circle. At 3 pi over 2, cosine is 0. And at 2 pi, cosine is 1. And so we'll go ahead and sketch once again one period of this graph, because it will start repeating after that. And that's what we have. And once again, we have that same symmetry over that x axis. 
So now let's take a look at some of the information. Domain, again, negative infinity to infinity because my angles can be anything I want them to be. The range is once again negative one to one, same low and high points. We have the same period, it takes two pi for cosine to start repeating. And you'll notice the amplitude here. It looks a little different at first, but if we look carefully from the center line down or from the center line up, the amplitude is still one unit for both of those. As of right now, everything's the same as sine, but now we'll have some differences. For example, our y-intercept in this case was 0, 1. And our x-intercepts are different as well. We've got pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and it'll continue in that pattern, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so on. Now looking at the pattern, it looks like it's all the odd multiples of pi over 2. And finally, from the last part of the chapter, we should remember that cosine is an even function. And if we think about the graph right now of cosine, so far it looks like this. And if I continue it going around the other way, you can see that we have that x, um, I'm sorry, that, that we have that y-axis symmetry, and that's what's going to make this one an even graph. The last thing I'd like to do in this video is take a look at the general equations for sine and cosine graphs, because we will be shifting these graphs around the, um, around. And so you can see that we have the same equation here. The only difference would be the sine versus cosine. And let's talk about what each of these letters is going to do for us. The first letter, the A, now normally when we have a multiplier in front of an equation, it deals with a y-axis um, stretch, so a vertical stretch or compression. And the way that we say that in terms of sine and cosine graphs in trigonometry is that it's the amplitude. So the A is going to help us determine the amplitude. A multiplier in front of the x, so that b value, in our other parent graphs dealt with a horizontal stretch and compression in the way that we discuss horizontal in this case is with what we call period. Now the equation for the period will be 2 pi divided by that b value and that will give us how much the period is. The h is the same as always. It's our shift left and right and because it's x minus h it's the opposite. So a minus is going to move us to the right and a plus is going to move us to the left. And finally, that k is going to be the shift up and down. And again, that is the same as well as our normal our other parent graphs. Just be aware of one thing with that k value is that sometimes it will be written in front more often. So sometimes you will see it written as k plus or minus a times the sine and cosine and so on. So that is really common for that, eight, uh, that k value to be in front instead of at the end. All right. So now that we have all the basics down today, um, when you come to class tomorrow, we will practice graphing some basics, and then we'll continue from there. And you have no Google form that goes with this video.